running a REPL on the command line is a very quick way to get started with Clojure. However, all the code is lost when the REPL is closed. So Clojure development is usually done within a project and the code is saved to files. CLJNU is a community tool for Clojure CLI tools, which provides a quick way to create Clojure or Clojure script projects. I have the latest Clojure CLI tools installed and I'm using the project new alias defined in the practically Clojure Depths Eden configuration to run the CLJ new tool. Open the terminal window and create a new project and the project name practically CLI app and press return and the new project will be created. Let's take a look at what this command has created. The Depths Eden file is a configuration for the project to be used with Clojure CLI tools. The Depths Eden file defines directory paths that contain Clojure code, in this case, source and resource. Libraries used with the project are defined as dependencies. There's only one dependency and that is Clojure itself. As Clojure is a project dependency, it's just a matter of changing the version number to run a newer or older version of Clojure. The Depths Eden file contains several aliases. Test sets the path of the unit testing code and includes a library for generative testing. Runner will run the unit tests with the Cognitect Labs tool and Uberjar will create a deployable package of the application. Let's look at the project structure. The app template created a project with the parallel source and test trees. This is a common approach used in Clojure. You may notice that the name of the file is slightly different. It's got an underscore in there rather than the dash. This is a limitation of the JVM. The class path does not accept dashes in the name. So the project automatically creates the equivalent file names based on the namespace. Let's take a look at the source code. Each Clojure file has a namespace definition composed of the directory path and file name. Namespaces help the development team organize the code logically. The namespace definition is followed by a definition of a function called main and prints out a string saying hello world. Run the project by specifying the main namespace. This will call the main function within that namespace by convention. To save some time typing when running the application, we can add an alias to the depths Eden file to run the project. We give an alias a name using closure keywords. In this case, we're using a qualified keyword just to explain what that alias is actually trying to do. And then we're just specifying the main ops where we can specify the main namespace. Let's save this file. And now we can run that alias to run the project. And we get the same result. This would be a useful alias to add to the project and even add it to a custom template that we create for ourselves. To develop this project further, we can start a REPL and write some code. Typically, you would open the project in your favorite Clojure editor and start a REPL from there. Let's just keep it simple and start a REPL with REPL readline. Now that the REPL is started, we need to require the project namespace, which evaluates all the code in that namespace within the REPL. Think of this as loading the project into the REPL process. The main function can now be called by specifying the fully qualified namespace and we get hello world. Again, hello world is a print line, so that's a side effect and the actual function returns nil. Rather than type the fully qualified name in each time, switch to the namespace using the NNS function. Now we can see that the prompt has changed and instead of being in the user namespace, we're actually now in the practically CLI namespace. When you call a function by a name, it's within the context of the current namespace. Now the function can be called just by using its name. Hello world. If we want to change the behavior of the function, we can type in a new function definition directly into the REPL. And we can call that function again. And we see that that message has been updated. It's more common to edit the code in your favorite editor. Let's update the text of the message in the main function and save the changes. Switch back to the REPL and call main again. And we can see that the message has not actually updated. This is because we need to reload the namespace to use those changes because our editor is not connected to that REPL. A simple way to reload the changes into the REPL is to take the require and add the reload keyword. This will load in the project again and calling main will give us the new message. Yay! This covers the basics of creating a project and using it with the REPL. Using a Clojure Aware editor connected to a REPL is a more effective way of developing projects. Code changes are evaluated in the editor, which sends the code to the REPL Code sent can be a single expression or a number of changes in the namespace. Take a look at the editor specific videos to see this in action. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.